strong Positive mindset A world class foundation For you and me Getting to know Young youths and athletes And talented coaches And so much more Champions in the making No pain, no gain Bringing you levels Bringing you levels to the table Warriors, teaching warriors Everybody welcome to the Dalton Grand Show Let's say welcome to episode 16 of the Dalton Grant Academy Talk Show Have I got a treat for you? Yes, I have When we were growing up, majority of us, or most of us, had music in our house um, me, my parents coming from the Caribbean, Jamaica, um, it was reggae music for me. Um, we have someone who's a pioneer in the urban scene. He's a legend. He worked for BBC One, Kiss FM, and now he works for BBC One Extra. Yes, no other than the legend, Trevor Nelson. Hello, Dalton. How you doing, mate? That's, that's a very gracious intro. I'm on Radio 2 now. I'm that old now that I'm doing Radio 2. So. Look at that well, Radio funny. 2. I did my homework. Yeah, yeah. why don't you join Radio 2? I'm still in the game, man. How you doing? Yeah, great. No, it, it, you know, it's amazing because I remember meeting you in 2010 at the Sony Music Awards. And yeah. I was shocked when we spoke and you told me that was the first award that you got to that day. So, I mean... Yeah, from, 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 them, from them, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the truth is, you know, take the MOBOs and things like that out. You know, the Sony Awards is the major radio like awards show. And although yes. I was on Radio yes. One all those years, I never went to the awards. I never got an award. I never got, I, I'd never been once in all the years. And then that year I went, I think, was that the year I won something? Yes, 2010, the Lifetime yeah. Achievement. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's it. It's the first time I went, they give me, I'm trying to get a cab. I'm saying to my boss, look, man, I need to get a cab. You know what I mean? Because all these people in the industry, when you come out, there's Adley drivers everywhere. Shouldn't I go now? I've got a breakfast show in the morning. But no, 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 stay, stay. Because he was all in, in on it. And then they gave me a, a career achievement award for all my yeah. years of broadcasting, which is the biggest honor you could get. And I, do you know what, Dalton? I mean, it's like, it was well deserved. I mean, I remember, you know, when I was looking for aspiring young athlete going training, I used to always see you the way you was focused. And I always mm. looked up to you and I commend you for everything what you've achieved so far. Um, but what was that mindset? Because I put it down to my parents and I knew that discipline. What was yeah. it for you? Like, what, what drove you and to have that kind yeah. of focus? Because you had well, the quality for you, you know? Yeah, but I mean, you were doing something. Listen, I've known, by the way, I've known Dalton a long, long time, right? So we were young and our paths crossed. We had a mutual friend, um, Kendrick. I mean, was it Hendrick? Yeah. Hendrick? Was it Hendrick no, or no. Kendrick? Derek. 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 Okay, I thought his name was Hendrick. No, it was Hendrick. No, Hendrick, Derek, he's a high, high jumper. Oh, Derek. Oh, Hendrick. Derek oh, Kendrick, oh, Kendrick also, also um, Henderson Pierre. Henderson Pierre. <laughs> That's the guy. <laughs> Because his dad is a good friend of my dad's, a good, good friend yes. of St. Lucia's solution. That's it. Henderson. That, yeah, man, I that's how long I haven't seen him. 30 years since I've seen that guy, you know, probably. So, um, and, and, you know, it's like you with athletics, anyone doing athletics, um, the discipline that you had to have to be even, to be, to be national level, do you know what I mean? To far less local level, you know, anybody who had a focus away from the stereotypical focuses that we always had, you know what I mean? Which was like partying girls or, you know, the usual thing. Well, music was my hobby. And my parents were similar to yours, very, very strict. Very, very focused and strict. When I say focus, I mean like the sacrifices they made for us, you know, man, even as a kid, I was aware. I was aware. Some kids weren't as aware. I was always aware. You know what I mean? That my parents had very little, came from very humble background. But my dad was very, he was very strict, man. And my mum was yeah. too. So yeah. when you did something wrong, you knew you were doing something wrong. Yeah. And you best not get caught, right? So, That's but it. they didn't, yeah, they didn't support me in my music so much because music was just a hobby. You know, it wasn't something that anybody, of our background or our colour that we could look up to and go, oh, 
but he unless you're a singer you know yeah but dj it was it was just a local thing sound system culture something to do keep you occupied keep you off the streets but i saw more you know i i i was i think yeah you're right i probably was really driven from when i was a teenager yeah. No, you and was, you was, because I, I saw that in you, and this is what I'd say, talent hasn't got sense, and, and it hasn't even got fitness in my sense, but yeah. what you need to have is the mannerism and how you handle situations, so yeah. what was it, because always we knew what colour, but it was never whether my coach liked me, it was what yeah. I brought to the table, yeah, and I yeah, enjoyed yeah, all yeah. these strengths and pressures to achieve, and I wasn't going to let my family down, you know, mm. and that's what it had, so like you yeah. said, I was very aware I was not going to let anyone influence me in the wrong directions. I knew people who were doing the wrong, and that was there high and by. There you go. My, my tip to a lot of young people is, people always say to me, man, you've had a great career. You've had a great career. And I'm like, I'm still in it. And, I, and they said, what's the secret? What's the secret? There is no secret. Everyone's individual. But the one thing I say, if you've got basic fundamentals, right? Um, and the basic fundamentals are, which I'm sure you've echoed a thousand times, talent yeah. means nothing without work ethic. It means nothing without work ethic, right? Nothing. And I'm, I don't really play the race card that much, but there's no two ways about it. We are second generation, right? Yeah. So we know, we know that no matter what's going on today, it was worse yesteryear, right? That's so right. it was worse. It was way worse. Yeah. Um, we had no one to aspire to. A f only a few people you could, you could look around and say, I said to somebody, they couldn't believe it when I said, you know, I didn't know anyone who went to university. Yeah. I didn't have one friend who went to university, right? It wasn't even an option for us. It, and it yeah. was free, but it was an option. But in that yeah. mentally for me, it wasn't an option. I'm not leaving Hackney. I'm not going to some place I've never been to before. I, I, I'm safe in Hackney. That's how I felt. And all my friends were like, get a job, get a trade, you know, do that sort of thing. Yeah. So I was, I was prepared to work in retail all my life, probably, even though yet I had so much more to offer. But yeah. my thing was, with music, it was very difficult because music is something, I don't know anyone who doesn't love music. Yeah. Seriously, right? And I was listening to music 24 hours a day. Right? It was a disease, right? You know what I mean? It was an absolute yeah. disease. Start, started my sound system. And I remember... Do, do, so I remember what, what was the name of your sound system, Joe? Mad Hatters. That's right. Mad I went Hatters. to a real... Hatters, yeah, yeah, of course. It was small niche. We liked a certain type of music, right? It was a, it was different to other sound systems. But I remember I did a gig, and this is the making of me, right? I did a gig in Dougie's in yeah. Clapton. Clapton's night. Right around the bar. There you go. On a Thursday night, no one went on a Thursday night to Dougie's, right? So we hired it. Thirty people turned up. Twenty-seven were on the guest list. <laughs> yeah. Three people paid. Three people paid, right? I'm standing there. There's more security than anybody. Else. I'm standing there. I knew I knew I wasn't going to get the night again. I knew that was my one chance, and it was gone. And the guy DJing with me said to me, "Boy, do you know what? I think you know might have to play some of this chart stuff. We might have to do this. Might have to do that." And I said to him, three people pay, bro. The next time I do a gig, four people are paying." And that was my mindset. I would rather know that people are there and like what I'm doing and grow that, then just be another person who's doing what everyone else is doing. You know, it was about being an individual. It's about not letting, you know, the obvious thing to make a living, you have to do certain things, you know what I mean? And I never wanted to make a living out of music. I always wanted it to be my hobby. So it's really weird mindset when I got the opportunity for it to be my living. Who influenced you, would you say, in your youth or your earlier days um, to get into the music? industry or to be a no, DJ, what? No, no, no one, no, I'm gonna be honest with you, no one. I think that the hobby thing, that was a whole cultural influence, The ho you know, the music thing, you know, we all love music, man, come on. Even if you yeah. were training all week or two weeks and someone invited you to a little christening or a party, you're still gonna try and make it there, you know what I mean? The, I need a little break for training. You know, it was an outlet, it was an escapism for black people, let's be fair. We, yeah. you know, when our parents, first came here it was their escapism so being well known I think it's, there's no one person you know I had a school teacher who kind right. of believed in me. So is this, your, is this your role model then? Your teacher, your parents or someone I'm, international? 
My parents, you got no choice. Your parents are <laughs> your parents are your role models, right? In that respect. It doesn't matter whether your parents, I think West Indian parents at the time weren't there to be your friends. They yes. were there to guide you. Right? Yeah. I didn't know any West I didn't know any West Indian parent back then who who I didn't have any friends who said, Yeah, my dad's like my mate. That that does that happens more nowadays than it did then. It was like, no, 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 no. My dad's either strict or he ain't. There's no in yeah. between, right? My dad's either down the pub. Or he's on my ass, you know what I mean? And it was one or the other. My dad was on my ass, you know. So outside, you need sometimes you need people outside of that to take an interest in you and to to, to rate you for something. And I had, a, I had a school teacher in my primary school, and we didn't have a football team in my primary school, and he started a football team. What primary school do you usually go to? Princess May. Oh, Princess May. Yeah, Princess oh. May. We didn't have a football team in my primary school, right? So he started the football team. And he, he, I was captain for a game or two, not because I was the best player or anything, just because he, yeah, he took an interest in me, you know? He took me to my first football, um, Chelsea game. My dad took me to my first football game, but he took me to my first Chelsea game. And wow. I'm a big Chelsea fan. He bought me a record at Christmas because he knew I liked my music. And I'm still in touch with a guy to this day. He lives in Miami with his family. Wow, and um, we're still in touch. We're still in touch. You know, he still keeps an eye on me and stuff. And sometimes you need, just when you're young, you just need someone else outside of your bubble of your family just to take it. It doesn't have to be somebody who does what you're going to end up doing. It just has to be yeah. someone else who kind of believes or sees something in you. It gives you that little, could be a coach in your case. It could be, could be another a senior athlete, could be anybody. But I had no one in the music industry at all. I thought the music industry was really bad for us. I thought they weren't releasing our music. I thought that I read so many horror stories. And when I got my little breaks, I decided that we need more infrastructure for black music in this country. So it wasn't just having a career. For me, it was, I was doing two, trying to do two things at the same time. I wanted to trailblaze. I have to honestly say it, because I didn't see anyone doing it. I didn't see yeah. R&B on a national level. I didn't see television shows with our music being represented properly, you know? And luckily I've got the opportunity to do that a few times. And I know one thing, Dalton, when you get a chance in life, bro, 100% take it. No 70%, yeah. not 80%. Don't blame anybody. I'm not in the blame culture. Don't blame people for your, for your failures. Don't give people too much credit for your, your successes. You know, it's down to you. It's a mental state of mind, mate. It's, it's like, I, 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 I had guys, there were so many DJs. I had, I, you know, I was no one special, you know, I, I, there were so many DJs, some of them were a bit flash, some of them were this, some of them just did it for girls, some of them just did it for fame, in local fame, and I tried to cut through that and say, well, there could be more to this, you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Integrity, um, the, the music could be bigger than this, and, you know, patience, perseverance, and I got there, and I still to this day can't believe the career I've had, and I'm enjoying my life now more than I've ever enjoyed my career, ever, right now. Well, I'm gonna yeah. for that. Dude, I'm happy, I'm happy, you know? I'm happy in my life. I mean, look at you, you look about 12. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> we're, still, we're, we're blessed that way. So, yeah. you know, and success isn't about fame and money. People need to understand that. I, I see a lot of people nowadays. So I was gonna ask you, Trev, the next question yeah. would have been, what key advice would you give to any young um, aspiring DJ or artist in terms of really attitude yeah. and mindset? Well, it's really simple, right? I think first and foremost, if you're true, don't fake it. You have to have true passion. It, you'll get found out. You will get yeah. found out. You know, you must, because there's going to be, no matter how, I've got a saying that, shit is always waiting around the corner, right? <laughs> and what I mean by that, what I mean by that is no matter how happy you are or how good things are going, something bad's gonna happen at some point and you gotta handle that and power through, right? So you gotta be very strong mentally. You gotta be more careful when you're doing well than when yeah. you're not doing well, right? And I, you also have to, need to have the ability to sometimes say no. People only think about the yeses. My head is always, I spend my time saying no to things 
because I don't believe in them or I don't want to do that. I don't care if it's money sometimes, Dalton. It's like, that's not right for me. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. Read the room. It's a massive thing in life, reading the room. I call it read the room, but it's, it's a really strange thing. And try not to let your personality be suppressed. Don't fake it. Don't be somebody you're not because yeah. you, again, will get found out. You know, there's nothing more rewarding in life than not having to put on a persona when you go to work. Yeah. To actually be in yourself. Now, for some people, that's really hard because themselves is like, yeah, you know what I mean? Because like, yeah, you know, but yeah, that's not yeah. life. That's you and yeah, your mates. Yeah, yeah. You know, in, in the real world out there, trust me, people might think, yeah, you're so cool, you're so cool. And when you walk out the door, oh, he's a fool. You know what I mean? <laughs> that, no. that one, that's right. Happens all the time. Happens all the yep. time. When I when I go in a room, let me tell you something, Dawn. When I go in a room of any amount of people and I don't know them, I'm, my hand is out to shake their hand, right? Some people will come and go, yo, right? And they're people I don't know. My hand's still like that. And yeah. <laughs> as, as far as I'm concerned, yeah. Until I know you, let's not be yeah, all this yeah. stuff. <laughs> until I know you, because let me greet you like I greet anybody. Let's shake hands, look in each other's eye, and let's move on from there. Let's move it on from yeah. there. But because you're putting, you allow yourself to be put into a box straight away. Straight you know? away. No, I, I feel you, Jay. I feel you. And that's what I do. I find it very hard as well for that. And I'm like that. I don't know if it's a hackney thing or our parents' values, but for instance, even a lot of my friends sometimes they haven't mm. grown up, grown up, I would say. Because when I'm trying to, I've been to three Olympics, I understand um, I've been trained and coached and took in information. And obviously mm. my results tell you how, how well I've done. They're still talking from school. They're telling me what I should be doing. And I can't really understand. So the thing is not just because what the purpose in life, you're famous for what reason? And I always say there's famous people in the community, like you're saying, that is famous. But what for playing music, for girls, for dressing well, you know, I don't really understand. And for me, I always that's get to know the, that's teenage. That. Yeah. But I go back to help. Yeah. 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 So so how do you do how do you handle that? Because obviously when you're tre Trevor, everybody wants to ride on Trevor, bring, bring me in or and, yeah, and you yeah, know, that's the line. In, that's the I line. understand. That's the line. That's the line. Bring give me a bring in, right? Um, <laughs> that's like give me a shortcut. That's like give yeah. me a shortcut, right? Now my theory, my theory is really simple. You're bringing people in by existing, Dalton. You're bringing people in by doing what you do, by you go into a room, you talk to people, you mentor people, you do something, you leave something in that room. You leave something that could change someone's life in something you've said or done, or just, you know what I mean? Just help them. And you may not see that for 15 years. That's yeah. your bringing. Do you get what I mean? My bringing yeah. is existing. I'm on the radio, some kid puts the radio on and goes, oh, there's a black guy doing, wow. Oh, that's normal to me now, you know, for, yeah. for them. It wasn't normal to me growing up. That The bringing is that, that's the bringing. That's the bringing, you exist, you are doing your thing. And then the parent says, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I used to listen to that guy when he's on Kiss FM or, oh, I've been to one of his parties, you know. And, and, and so the family start going, oh, I, I know that dude, I've seen him on telly or whatever. And as long as they don't go, he's an idiot or he's a, he shows rubbish, or it's all negatives that come out. That's that there is the bringing. You don't know it at the time, but it is so important. If I said to you, and this is this is our, us talking as black guys, right? And this is important. I know. I don't. I'm, I'm not talking to just black people, but the difference between us and and you know our Caucasian brothers and sisters out there is that we we see things are through our eyes that they can't see because we're just culturally different. It's just like. If we put the telly on and we're growing up and love thy neighbor, which is a program that a lot of people won't remember, but people of a certain age will remember. Mind your language, love thy neighbor, all these shows where the only black people on telly were on. Yes. Okay. You're looking. And if I said to you, if I bumped into you next week, I said, did you see thingy last week? Nine out of 10, you go, yep, yeah, because that's how it was. It's the only black people we've seen on telly. But the man, for all that, there was Trevor McDonald reading the news. That's right. Sir Trevor on reading the news. It's very important that we see both of this going on at the same time. He he does not understand how important he was, someone like him, to, to making me feel normal about seeing a black guy with a suit on telling me what's happening, 
in the world. Definitely. Because all I was fed was caricatures of my race being laughed at or jokes yeah. being made or, or yeah. entertain me, entertain me. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, so definitely, definitely. In my head mentally, and his name was Trevor, in my head mentally, <laughs> I was always of the opinion that if I get my chance, I have to leave a legacy. I know it sounds heavy, and I know it sounds all the rest of it, but I can't be like Pete Tong and just have a dance music career and just be another DJ and think about myself. I have to think about my community too. I have to think about the next guy who comes in after me, are they gonna take him seriously? Well, the more professional I am, the more chance he's got of being taken seriously. And that was yeah. my whole drive motivation. You know, so it weighs heavy a little bit. Stormzy made a tune called The Crown. Yeah. I could relate to it. I could relate to it, you know what I mean, in certain ways. And any anybody who's in a certain situation can relate to that. You know, it, it, it wears heavy, you know, you, you, you're you guessing me up. Huh? Definitely, I'm, I'm, I understand, but you know, I think it's dysfunctional in our community because even the contacts and the reach that you can have, um, the mm. impact that you can go straight to the top and understand. Yeah. And as like a scout, you've got to see talent. You can see people, their background, understand the yeah. struggles. There's too yeah. many people in positions that don't really understand that. And this is yeah. our problem. That's why we've not grown. Um, you know, I know uh, for me, it set up an um, academy, the Academy in Trinidad. And yeah. The main reason was my friend was a minister of legal affair in Trinidad. So I've got to get that experience and understand, mm -hmm. you know, coming back, being a board director of London 2012. So my mindset is different. So when I speak to you that 1%, we could understand those struggles. But to majority yeah. of people, they can't. And what I feel like, they think we're different and they want to be like us. At the same time, they want to tear us down. Yeah, yeah. So, it's difficult. So, yeah. It's difficult. So how did you break into the American scene then? Especially with your mindset coming from the UK and, you know. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean again, people. again. Okay, I'll say this. I think you've got to have some personality. You know what I mean? You've yeah. got to have something. You can't, you know, it's not, it's not like, oh, I'm a dude. They've got, you know, I've done some great interviews with everybody oh. that you can imagine in my career, right? And um, I've built up some very good relationships. I don't have their phone numbers. I always say this to people. People think, oh, you've got Mary J. Blige's number. You've got Fingy's number. But they respect me, you know. They come here. They, I interview them. Um, we've had, you know, I've helped them break records in this country. And it's a mutual thing. But so the Americans take me seriously. But this is what's interesting about America. And don't get me wrong. I'm not going to diss them. But they have a slightly more voracious culture than us, right? Go get-ish. Yeah. Everything's about winning. Everything's yeah. about, you know, this is, the, this is the basic difference I found between the American culture and the UK culture. In the UK, in fairness, I still think it's the best country in the world to live in for me. I, 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 London is just an amazing city. I don't look at the negatives of London. I look at the positives. It's just so multicultural. It's, it's the whole world in one place, right? It really is. It's a, and, and it's, you know, it's nowhere near as violent as other places and dangerous. It is not, trust me, right? Now I went to New York in the eighties and I was nobody. And I, went, and I went there and I was trying to talk to people. And the first thing everybody always said to me, what do you do? Not what's your name, what do you do? Yeah. Right? Which made me dislike them. Because I'm used to, hey, what's your name over here? You know what I mean? In the yeah. UK. It's, what do you do? And that happened the first two, three times I went. I was nobody. By the time I went fourth or fifth time, I was head of a and at a record company for EMI. I had an MX card with EMI written on it, Trevor Nelson, EMI. I booked into the Royal Hotel in Manhattan. But I got to my room door and my, there were messages on my phone already. <laughs> from people I did not know. Wow. All right, from people I didn't know. Now, all of a sudden, I'm Trevor Nelson, a and man, Radio 1 DJ, or something like that, stroke, you know, and th they all want to know you. Yeah. But before I was scratching around, looking around, trying to, not, not getting in, because I, I was all right. I was, I was over there for music and content. You know, I just didn't like it. But yeah. then I also realised, it also taught me that if you don't get anywhere, you're nobody to these people. Yeah. You know, you're nobody. Don't waste my time. Don't, I'm not even going to ask you your name next if you don't say. If the answer to yeah. what, you, what you do doesn't satisfy me, I'll kind of move yeah. on, mate. 
That's right. No, <laughs> that's really, really funny. <laughs> it's funny because, like, um, you know, I wanted to be a footballer, but my talent lied in, in athletics and took off. Mm. And once I took off, like, exactly the same, people want to get to know you when you're playing, just to hang on you. But like how your career molded you, yeah, now, mm. and you've got a powerful voice. Have you ever got, mm. thought of going into politics or even yeah, going yeah. for the <laughs> Yes. No, no, I'm just going to go. No, I'm serious. No, it's funny you should say that because when I was younger, I used to think about that, you know. I used to think, do you know what? I think I could be a decent politician, but I wouldn't want to be a politician in this lifetime. It, it's, um, no, nah, politics isn't my thing. I'll tell you why. I know there are lots of people who go into politics for the right reasons. For yeah. The right reasons. They really do. I have a sister in St. Lucia who's in, into politics. She's all about the people. She's all in it for the right reasons. Everything she's in it for. And I know, that's my sister. I know. I know what she's about. But then there are people who she might work with who I look at and I don't believe they're in it for the right reasons. And that's the problem. It's not about what you believe. I see people and I look at them, I look at certain politicians and I think, I believe that guy's in it for the right reasons. But how does he function with that party of his where there are so many members who are in it for the wrong reasons, right? So politics, I don't, I, damned if you do, damned if you don't, so no. <laughs> no for me. My, my politics, Dalton, is, I'll tell you what my politics is. Working at the BBC, all these young DJs we have now, broadcasters that we have, being there for them when they want to talk to me. Yeah. Talking to the bosses above, the conversations no one hears about or knows about, I'm in contact with any BBC boss above me on black issues, on any issue. I'm not out to get, pub to forget for the public to know that or, you know, to make statements about my race or what's going on. Our time, Dalton, is coming to an end, me and you, yeah. right? Our influence. Let's be real. Our mortality, we're at the same age. You know what I mean? Our mortality, we, we, have, we are doing our thing. The youngsters are the ones that have to take it on, right? And all we can do is mentor them every now and again. Talk, but we're not the ones who have to scream and shout from the pulpits anymore because no. we're just, we're too old for that. Do you know what I mean? We're too old for that. Um, we're not activists. Do you know what I mean? Our, our, I think our role is to stay doing what we do trying to be excellent, trying to be as good as we can as a, as a I don't want to use the term role model, but it, it's hard to avoid it. Do you know what yeah. I mean? You get told so many times, eventually you have to say, okay, fair enough. Do you know what I mean? But that's, that's how I see it. And the politics for me is navigating a lot of the, the red tape, a lot of the, there's a lot of, I'm a bit dismayed this year, if you want the truth, with what's going on with my race. And in the sense of, on television and the way to me it's just like a veneer on society they're just throwing these images at you on television to make you think yeah. the world's all right it's really fair it's actually doing my head in yeah because you and i both know this i don't want to see it on telly i want to know it's happening in the boardroom i want to know it's happening behind the scenes i don't i don't you know i don't want to see all this this sort of you just put a coat of paint on, paint on the problem you well, know what exactly. i mean and you know what's going to happen in the future when they pull up various things, oh, we gave you money for Windrush, we've done that. And I think that people don't really mm. understand. There's a lot of people yeah. in position and they're in these positions with titles. Sometimes they even pull away the power and some people don't yeah. really know what they're doing. They just want the yeah. name and it's about their self. You know, I'm, and, I'm, I'm like, you. and even if I look in America, at least America know people, but I think maybe the history in America where if you ask someone where you're from, from America, where you're from, America, where you're from, because it's going right back to slavery. But when you come into the UK, mm. someone's from St. Lucia, Jamaica, yeah, Antigua, yeah, yeah, you're yeah, from somewhere. Yeah. So we came over yeah, here because yeah. of the riches, but obviously they're mm. over there. So that's why I think their mindset now, they're more advanced in that way. So they are like, I'm going to be more ravenous and they know people. Mm. But if I had to go mm. now and say, who's a great black role model in the country that we know is actually doing something on the ground, ground that I can even say, I want to jump on this. I don't know anyone. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I see. when I see David Lammy, for instance, speak and what he says, that's history. History cannot repeat itself if you don't repeat history. Now, forward thinking, you're in a position where you can help people. 
So mm. this is how you've got to mold them and show them how to handle and take on the challenges that you have to learn and make it easier. But you've got to be prepared to put the work in. You know, and these are the kind of things that I, same like you, what I feel. I mean, I've got a picture over here, you know, this picture here is from yeah. Hackney, Stoke Newton Police Station. So I got drawn into it in the sense of my daughter, like the youth mm. just went out and she was going up to George Floyd. And I thought, well, I said, no, don't go there because I was scared because COVID and mixed with the people. And I'm just thinking mm. there was going to be problems. And I didn't want my daughter, she was 17 at the time. So I thought what she's doing, she's got a voice and I had to commend her. So I thought, what can I do? I wasn't going up there. So before anyone did, I went down to the police station with my Olympic tracksuit and put the fist up. And it's not, a lot of people know, I've got a lot of white friends, a lot of great white friends. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. like you said, I don't define color. Um, in a sense, it's what you bring to the table, you know, and what mm -hmm. you're bringing to the table, you surpass color. Once you get to a certain level, it's just that, that talent that human being has. Yeah, to be honest, to be honest, and this is the thing, right? When I do radio, I want people to go, it's Trevor. I don't want people to think about my colour. I don't want people to think yeah. about any, I, I, that, you know, I, I am my colour. I am proud of who I am, right? I think as, as a middle-aged black man, I think, I, I notice the more middle-aged black people who are known have been quite, quite quiet. I mean, they yeah. don't live on social media, you know what I mean? But they've been quite quiet over the last year. They have their discussions with each other. It's the youngsters that are going crazy and, and, and fighting for their, you know, for, for justice and all this stuff. And I get it. The reason I think a lot of us, uh, my age group, our, our age group, are quite quiet is because they've been there, they've done it, they've seen it, they've, they've, they've lived it. We've had two riots, major riots in our lifetime, domestically, Thank you. right? Major riots, like major. Yeah, like 81, I think it was Broadwater Farm and everywhere in London was on fire, you know what I mean? And then more recently, yeah. yeah. And once you've seen all that, you kind of go, okay, let's see what let's see what happens with this. But all we can do is be measured about the, the whole situation because yeah. Kanye West once said, absolutely controversially, slavery seems like it was a choice to me because there's millions of you guys and seems like there was a choice. No, it wasn't a choice. They had no choice. You know what I mean? It was wrong for him to say that. But that's how I think the youth are feeling a bit more empowered. I think you're frozen there, Dalton. Can you hear me? Yeah, I've been frozen. All right, all right, cool. So, I, you know, I, I'm torn a little bit because some people think, oh, you've got a voice. You should be screaming. You should be screaming. You should be screaming from the pulpit. And I'm thinking, no, no not at all. Not at all. Yeah. This, is a, this, is, this is your future. Right, this is you lot's future. You know, I remember growing up and my parents didn't, you know, they knew me, but they didn't know me. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. They're from the West Indies. They had a certain way of living when they came here. And then we're their kids, we grew up here. We know what they don't know. They know what we don't know. You know, they, we, it, it's impossible. I know you're a parent. It's impossible to know everything your child is thinking. You can't, it's, or else that child will never be an individual. They have to keep something to themselves, you know what I mean? So I was a deep thinker when I was 15. I used to think a lot. I used to think a lot and I used to say to myself, you know what? My mum my mom and dad are not struggling, they're working class. You know, they're working class. My dad used to work on the buses initially, you know, my mum was a childminder. So my pocket money wasn't exactly fat, <laughs> you know what I mean? So it was get a part-time job, help your family out by not taking money off them. You know, Definitely. from 15, I had, that, I, had that, I had that mentality from 15. And I feel yeah. like I've been working since I've been 15. And wow. so it is, whereas I think, I, think we, I think we do spoil our kids a little bit more today. So, more so, yeah. so if you, you could know, go was, back in time, it would, uh, yeah. is there anything that you would you do different? Do different? Um, no, not really, man. I take all the experiences I've had as part of the reason I've survived this world and, and, and prospered. I think that, I think that what, growing up in a, I think I was really lucky, Dalton, I'll tell you why. And a lot of black people will probably echo this, who have this situation. I grew up in Hackney and to me, Hackney was just the Commonwealth. It was everybody, you know? Yeah, black friends, white friends, yeah, everybody, everybody, Irish, Turkish, everybody living there, right? And of course my core friends were black. Look, you know, I could identify them. Then I went to school, I went to grammar school at Central Foundation. 
in the city, which pissed me off because I wanted to go to the same Brook House or Upton House or Hackney Downs. That's where I wanted to go. Yeah. Yeah. I went to the school where I was a minority, massive minority. There was like four black kids in my year. But it also meant that I met kids I wouldn't have normally met. Yes. And, I, and I'm talking to kids that there's no way I would have met them in my lifetime. Right? And I didn't realize that was preparing me for my life. Yeah. Because I started stepping into every workplace I stepped into as I got more successful was exactly the same. Then when I went to the record label, it's the same thing. Then I went to, you know, when I went to MTV, it was the same thing. I went to BBC, it was the same thing. My whole life, I have been in a minority in my workplace. And so my personality was really important that you go and you read the room and I'm leaving that room with my personality intact. I'm not changing my demeanor. I'm not changing the way I am in that room, but I want people to be comfortable in that room because I know what they're thinking and let's get it off the bat comfortable. I'm Trevor from now on. I'm not that black guy, Trevor, I'm Trevor. Yeah, yes. I don't say it that way, but you work a way of making sure you, when you leave that room, because all they're thinking is, there's that new black guy. Now I'm Trevor, definitely. from now on I'm Trevor. That's it. And that's how I found my life every step. And now I'm on radio too. It's like back to square one, it's the same thing. Yes. I'm in the minority yeah. there. My whole career has been like this. And wow. a lot of people, a lot of people who come from an ethnic background, who succeed in life, will find that happens. 100%. Well, on that note, I'd like to thank you. Adversity, the way you handle it, it's the way you handle situations. That's what I found out. Discipline, you know, don't spoil your, your kids. Give them a bit of tough love. <laughs> <laughs> Different times, you know, because, you know, uh, you know. Yeah. Like I'd say, like to say, Trevor, BBC Two Radio, eh? Well done. And yeah. And if I, I'm going to give you a magic wand. One wish, what would you wish for? Yeah. <laughs> Ten billion dollars for retire, mate. <laughs> what? 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 Isn't it? Um, to be honest, um, I was talking about um, if I had one wish, I not a personal wish, just a, I, I, I hope that 2020 hasn't been a waste of time. That's my my wishes, seriously. Not only um, because it's given everyone a lot of time to slow down and think, it's given me a lot of time to think, but obviously exterior things that have been happening um, in this world have been so rapid, so much for people to take in. I hope it hasn't been a waste because one minute we have the George Floyd scenario and then we have a lot of empathy from everyone around the world who saw that. And I feel some of that has been tarnished now with the way it's been politicized so much, you know what I mean? And I, I, I just hope the one wish I have is that 2020 is not a wasted opportunity. All the negative and tragic things that have happened in 2020 should be for the better than going forward. You know, people I felt were being nicer to each other initially anyway. You know, I'm going yeah. for walks. I don't know people, people saying hello, people are caring about each other, people are older people, people, are, it felt more like we were becoming more community driven again, yeah. which I think, lost we lost a lot particularly in London and for the first time people started talking to each other again you know what I mean because this is what clearly happens like in, in times of war and things that we've never experienced you know what I mean this is the most this is the most as a whole country this is the the biggest crisis we've had do you know as what I mean and it, you in any way, Trevor as it as this affected you in any way yeah I think so I think at first I'll be honest with you I appreciated it, man. I needed to slow down. I stopped. And for the first time, I stopped and got off the wheel. This, this, you know, this wheel of motivating yourself and getting up every morning and having to do stuff. And I looked at my life and I thought, you know, I thought about my family a bit more because I've had issues in my family. And, you know, I thought about, I lost an uncle as well. I lost a godfather. A couple of my best friends lost parents. And... It, my, my mortality, man, it's, I started thinking about my mortality and, you know, death. You start thinking about death, you know, you, the dark things. And what have you done? Have you done enough? Have you, I started wondering if I've got the empathy that I really, have I lost a bit of empathy over the years? And I think I had, you know, so focused, you know, so for me, it, 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 
it, it helped me. It changed me a little bit, you know. It made me realise I'm not enjoying life enough, Dalton. I'm just working, just driven, working. But, you know, sometimes you've got to take, you, you've got to enjoy yourself, you know. No, you have to, you have to, yeah. You have to enjoy yourself. I, I, and, mm. Yeah, and I so I, I, a better balance. I, what, what it brought for me was I, I realised I've got to have a better balance in my life. You know, I'm so hard-headed about doing what I've got to do that what's the aim here? What What's the objective? What, what you, you know, what about you? What about, <laughs> you know what I mean, mate? I started yeah, walking. Yeah. I started walking, which is, for a while anyway, which is brilliant because I get in my car to go everywhere. And walking, you think so much. It might, it's like if you run or you train or you when you're training, I suppose, and you zone out when you're used to I don't know if you ever jogged when you did your 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 training or whatever yeah, I did. But, but you know what I'm gonna do so, Trevor I'm gonna give I'm gonna give you a training session I'm gonna yeah, give you a before, training session before I yeah, die I, yeah. I mean I'm working with a corporate lady who's actually working Nike yeah. and she's seen the benefit yeah. and I've just done it through the lockdown and it's amazing because she was a swimmer and um, the transformation huh. you know that how she's wow. improved and she's over 40. So for me as an what? athlete it's not about um you know, I, I, I'm driven for performance, but it's your platform. It's building that platform and seeing how yeah. well you can do it. And a lot of people think they can run, but until you've been taught properly. Yeah. I'd love, I'd love you to give me a training session. I'd love you to assess me because I'm an old boy now. You know what I mean? I still look trim. Doesn't mean I'm fit. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, no. It, it, it will, you know, athleticism, mindset, and let you know the skills yeah. and the drills and building a foundation. Yeah. Because if you don't train properly, once you get fitter and you run, run, you pick up an injury because you might not yeah. have the right technique. Because she was when she was running. I'm with, you. Yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'll tell you something. The best training I did, the training that I did once that changed, that mentally made me so strong was boxing training. I've got a friend yeah. who's a boxer, right? And boy, man. Them guys yeah. there, I've got a new fan respect for them. The mental strength, right? It, it's a different kind of thing. You're doing sport, you're trying to get higher than a, you know, you're trying to pole vault or high jump or hurdles or whatever. That's technical and there's lots of technical stuff there and you've got to be motivated and driven. Boxing, mate, it's different when someone's yeah. hitting you, right? That's what I'm finding. The foundation, the hitting is different, giving a punch and taking it. I've had a yeah. few boxers and I've had them on their knees. See, it's a difference when you're just training by the sport. But don't forget, when you're yeah. physically training to train harder, it's different. I mean, Jonathan yeah. Edwards was still in for Christie. He actually cleaned 150 kgs. When I was squatting, Jeez. people don't realize, I used to squat 370 kgs. Not fall down, but quarter squats. So it's down, pump up, pump up. Yeah, so yeah. people don't yeah, yeah. realize how strong we are. Fitness yeah. is not like personal training. No, no, no. You're trying to jump 230 or 240. You're trying to run sub 10. When people yeah. say they're fast, every stride is a force is what go into your body to execute to run faster. So the foundation of training is athleticism. It leads well, let, me ask you a question. let me ask you a question. Apparently, this is just a tip. Uh, I've been reading recently, and a couple of people have said to me, like, when you get older, yeah. Yeah, strength is, is, is almost more important than um, cardio because your bone density to keep yourself, you, you, you actually protect yourself by being stronger as you get older. So for me, I don't, I'm, cause I'm a slight guy. I'm, I'm probably naturally built like you, but shorter, you know, we're, yeah. we're kind of lean with that, with that, I don't know what they call that man, ecto whatever man or whatever, but we're <laughs> lean. And um, you know, I've never really done big weights or anything like that. I've always done a bit of cardio, which probably is not, the best thing for me now i play golf so i walk which is great but i realize i have to do some weights again and start just getting stronger again because i i can feel my body needs that you know what i mean yeah. so you know, you do, it's great we do um foundation so i do core circuits video mm -hmm. mix section because yeah. it's important when you put weights on your shoulder it will go into onto your back knees and here yeah. so i build these um areas and then we go into the gym so you get instant okay. results. I mean, I'm training right. a young girl and, and she's yeah. 13. She just got signed permanently for the under 16s. And it's just the right training because, you know, like we were saying, I did started weights at 19, Trevor. 
I yeah. didn't really start younger. But when you look at the Americans or you look at the Germans and the Russians, they start early. They understand what it takes. And what they've learned, all the training has come from their past champions. Now you get someone who go, I would go and study and get, a, uh, let's say, a coaching badge. There'd be nothing mm -hmm. to do with a Colin Jackson or Roger Black or Daley Thompson training program. It's a program that has no results and they know more. But then you have someone who's been in the, in the arena and, you know, trained and you can see the performance and how fast or high, how, how high they jumped. And this is going to do, it's like someone not following the model of Trevor Nelson's journey. You're mm. going and study to, to, yeah. to surpass this journey. No. All you need to find out is if that um, person is articulate, having a good eye. So what I do, I'll look at you. And when I bring you to a session, I'll be able to tell, is it your knee? Is it your back? Your mindset at that level. And I can challenge you in there. Uh, so this is why I get that. <laughs> You're scaring me. You're scaring me. <laughs> I'm telling you, if you meet, I'm going to do that. If you meet this lady and you see where she come from, you'll be shocked. Yeah. I think oh, no, I've been session. worried about you. You might go back and really start going out there and be an activist. <laughs> <laughs> I want to, I want to, I want at least once. I want, right? Right. We'll, we'll do this this year. I'll have a session with you. But what I take from coaches like you, and I have not had many, but I, I do take things in and I realize more about my body than I've ever realized now. I, I understand, you know, most people. I would go as far as say 80% of people I've seen exercise do it badly. That's 80. Right. Maybe more than 80. I've seen arch backs. I've seen extended stumps. I've seen bad breathing. I've seen really terrible posture. But when you go to a gym, I'm not a member of the gym. I've got a mini gym in my house. But when you go okay. to a gym, you can't, as a punter, you can't be calling people out. You, you know, you're watching them. But you I'm can't look up and say, doing this wrong. Because I don't work there. But I am I am amazed, Dalton, amazed at how many people do gym badly. And I and I honestly think there should almost be a law where you can't do gym unless you're doing it correctly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because <laughs> you do more harm to you do more harm to yourself. You no, do no, more harm to good. I've seen yeah. people on a road team with their back all bent up and I yeah. want you to yeah, up that position. Yeah, shoulders square. Right. Rowing is the most torturous sport uh, exercise, I'm telling you, because... No, no, I know. I found rowing, you know, I've got a rowing machine upstairs, and what I ended up doing was just using it for warm-ups, like five minutes correct posture. If you Just even five minutes correct posture rowing is good, rather yeah. than 20 minutes of bent over, and, yeah. you know... You know, I'm, I'm laughing because and that's the thing what I do, always shake and how you conduct yourself. Is that when you walk as a model? Is that when you jump, you know, check, how you kick a board? But a lot of people yeah. haven't got that core strength, and that's what I do. The foundation yeah. for me is core, core. Static, yeah. then core on the move, because everything that you do on the move. So these are the kind of things. Even when you do plank, that's on the spot. Yeah. But when you're not yeah. going to stand on the spot, you're going to walk. So Did give me a day. I'm leaving that to you. The ball's in your court. So you're going to give me the day and when, and I'll work around well, your schedule. Yeah, we're, we're going to do it, but I, I'll come to you. Don't worry, I'll come to you if you want me to. You know what I mean? I don't know. You just tell me what, I'll come to you. We'll, right, you know, you, you can film me some time. it. But, hey, film it, but don't use it. All right, then. <laughs> you know, not great, mate. We'll do it, we'll do it, man. It'll be fun. Definitely. Well, on that note, I'd like to say Trevor Nelson. Sir Trevor Nelson, thank you. Yeah, what? <laughs> don't be stupid, man. I'm an MBE, that's about it. Dalton, <laughs> I'll be talking to you, man, and catching up. Keep doing what you're doing, man. Yeah, thank you. Take care. Yes, mate. Dalton Grant Academy. Work ethic. Mentally strong. Positive mindset. World class foundation. Elite athletes. Youth. Never give up. A talented coach. Meeting talented athletes equals success. Championing the making. No pain. No gain. Bringing new levels to the table. Learning about the standard as words versus physicality. Warriors. Teaching Warriors.